All right, recording. Hi, this is David Govett, a uh, new user to Reaper, convert from Cubase, which I still have a lot of respect for Cubase, but Reaper's doing a lot more of the controlling items that I want to do and integrating everything and very customizable and very well laid out. So I've only been playing with it for a week and have made a lot of progress. Things that would have taken me, you know, a day to a week to do, I can do in hours here once I've figured out the learning curve anyway. So anyway, here I just want to show off some of what I've been doing with the uh, Reaper as well as the ReLearn utility and my controllers, the X-Touch things and the ReLearn projection app, which is really nice. So I'm just going to go over some of these things. It'll be kind of a long handheld video. I'll do something a little more professional with screen captures and camera, if you guys like, uh, to show how I set most of the stuff up. Maybe do some detailed tutorials because my learning curve was steep and aggravating at times, but it's really beautiful when it gets going. So I'll show you what I've got. I got uh, most of Reaper here on the monitor with the, the mixing channel so that you can see everything as it happens in real time. I got the projection interface, uh, the relearn thing that shows it's kind of a, a, a recreation of my X-Touch Compact and all of its buttons up on the screen. And I also created just the extra ones I use. This is the X-Touch. These on the top are the extra buttons I use on Bank B as well as these extra encoders I use on Bank B. But everything else in here is just the X-Touch as you see it. That way I can fit everything I use on one screen, but I can customize it all I want, too, if I need to use more buttons. So, of course, first I've got the regular X-Touch, and it's running in Mackie mode. Eventually I'm going to get an extender, so I'll have Mackie mode control of 16 channels. I could add the compact and have 24 channels, but this thing's much more useful as a MIDI controller in MIDI control mode and use all these buttons. So, and this is out of the box. I'm not doing the fancy... Uh, uh, programs or scripts yet, but I want to look into those. But it's got everything I need. It's got all. It's got really good response to the faders. And with Reaper, for goodness sakes, you can you can scroll all the way across your mix by just you know selecting a button and not having to uh, scroll on the screen. I used to have to do that in previous software, and that got real old real quick. So bank over here find the channel I'm going to be showing off in a little bit. It does all the playback, toggling the markers, several buttons can be programmed, and all the read, write, and automation, mute, solo, record, enable, to where you can actually get a session going without having to reach for a mouse or a keyboard. So that's my goal, is to do as much mixing, recording, and automation and everything with nothing but these controllers, and I'm pretty close to that. It's like 95% once I get it set up and remember where I left everything, so... All right, uh, let's see. Let me start with just a channel that I put a whole bunch of controls on. This is using the ReLearn, and I'm using two instances of it. I'll tell you about what I'm using them for. Uh, but first thing I did is in Reaper, I programmed these eight buttons to be dedicated to just bringing up eight inserts. I'm probably not going to use more than that. I can do some more programming if I need to. But basically on this channel, I just put a whole bunch of um, effects all at once so I can trigger it, and that focuses it to where I can actually start editing it. And pull up the flex verb, a whole bunch of SSL options here on this channel. And I'll show some other stuff on another channel. But uh, basically, I don't even have to have the channel selected. Uh, but it's, I just have to just touch a channel and, bring, and start calling up things on, on that channel. So first channel, it brings this up. And as it brings it up, the projection changes too. So the projection has my custom settings of attack, release, compressor, in button, and all that stuff. And this helps you not forget where you put your controllers. Because check check out all the different places I got controllers. That's for the, the reverb with the sliders and everything. And then bring up the next thing, the little compressor, uh, uh, phase thing, which really benefits from all the up and down buttons. And this, as you can see, it goes across... Uh, like that across the middle and so I just grab those obvious faders when I go left to right and there's all the details about it and so yeah every time I put these things up it, it changes in real time and lets you know all 
your parameters because it's real easy to forget. After a while, if I haven't used this program for a while, I can just quickly glance over there and see, okay, yeah, I'm just using mainly those encoders and then just start playing with it. And I'll even put put a like there's this this encoder up there and I'll just put the button right below it to enable it. All that stuff. So I try to program things since I got across faders and up and down, I try to program things to kind of match what's on the screen a little bit as best I can. The obvious case is the flex verb. Look at all the nice faders and knobs and everything. Well, it goes without saying, uh, faders are good to go. And as soon as I enable it, it just um, it just uh, automatically the faders just lock to the program whatever's doing and of course you know I can do all the stuff from the faders as well I can grab some knobs and straight across I can also do the EQ on another another channel there so and as I bank between programs you know defaults and everything else this thing will just keep up with it which is really good the other nice thing, okay, another example, I got up and down right through here. Notice I've got some up and down. So I've got input, threshold, try to show some of the things happening simultaneously. And since here we have a lockdown button, to lock down the wet and dry level, I just press that same encoder that I'm turning. And same thing here, I can enable the revert, the compressor that's built in by just pressing that button. And then the other nice thing is you can do toggle buttons uh, with the real layer and something I've never had. In this case, on this little reverb, there's eight settings that normally you have to grab the mouse and drag down and do like that. But I just put them on eight buttons. Two, three, four. So I'll just show you what it's doing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just right across. Since there's eight programs, I just used eight buttons. And also there's early reflection room and size and tail room and size and so I also mapped out some buttons to that if I can find them yes there they are so I move to the hall medium small same thing with these other things uh, with the tails on the bottom and the faders as you can hear and see are moving in response to them so it's really handy so let's see what else we got. Got a nice little compressor. I just grabbed the first several faders in order. But when I saw some up and down, I didn't really diagonally do them. I just went straight down from the top to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And on this last one, I just pressed the encoder. And it does its thing. And these, I just went straight across. So anyway, you get the idea. So I want to close what I've got and move to another channel where I've got a variety of other things. So just instant control of every little parameter on there. I can reach below with the button I'm on and trigger stuff. So I just try to put things near the, the knob I'm turning. There's a knob there and below it is a button. So I can twist the knob and do the button. Two knobs over, controls that one, and the button right below it triggers it as well in real time. So uh, This one's an interesting one. This is a crazy mastering EQ, and look at all those knobs. It's like I don't have that many. And used a banking feature, basically, where I can trigger five buttons and control um, two bands. So basically what I'm doing is I got three bands. I got gain, Q, and, and, and frequency. And so left gain, right gain, left, right, left, right. And so the first time I do it, you get uh, band one on the left and band one, the low frequency on the right. And as soon as I hit another button, it moves over, over a level. And hit another button moves to the next band so basically gives me all the way to the right anyway it gives me all those buttons there i haven't finished programming these things but with just these eight encoders i can with two hands 
independently adjust the left and the right simultaneously and just bank them over. So that's another thing that ReLearn can do that I've never had access to. This is fun. This really shows off directional and it really feels like you're operating the thing. So everything kind of matches. Let me move this to the lower corner so you can kind of see some of the buttons that we're using. So here, since this compressor has a lot of up and down, I just took advantage of that with these up and down sliders. So, um, and I can bank over. So here we go. Maybe I can get some buttons in view at the same time. There we go. So I'm operating these here plus that one on a separate fader. So, and I just have it left, right, left, and this is a switch. So I just toggle the button and so on. And I can sit there and totally automate this whole thing and then grab this for the, for the main thing. Um, and what's neat is, um, when I banked to use these same controllers on the left side, they're reversed. The switches on the left, and so I made it match the same way. And so I'm not having to try and reverse it in my mind. And then all these other switches are coordinated up here. And the neat thing is they've got these switches for, get it out of dual mono, independent if you want, for the different types of of metals, nickel, iron, steel, and all that stuff. And instead of putting that on a coder, I just put it on these six buttons to match that. One, two, three. And so I can do them independently just by doing the up and down buttons in the same direction as, as the actual interface. So that one is really, really nice. Uh, here you can go nuts. Uh, just tons of encoders and just work my way all the way down on each channel. Not gonna spend too much time on that. So anyway, let me hop over to another channel. Okay, first I'll uh, show you the, the instances of Re Real Learn. I've got them. There's just like a plug-in, so I can pull one up and pull the other up. Now I've got one that ba goes based on the focus of the effects. That's what you've been watching this whole time is the focusing on the effects. Uh, but the second one. It's just set to just uh, a standard one, and it's going to be based on you have to kind of select the channel. And the reason I wanted that was I wanted the ability to um, see my uh, low pass, high pass filters. So if I enable this channel, should be able to edit them. Yeah, I've got it to where a left and a right button edit those. And another button will actually adjust the volume of each channel. So I can literally go on the Mackie, key, Ma uh, the Mackie controller keyboard, select, select a channel, toggle a couple of things as I'm playing, and listen to my high pass and low pass filters. Toggle another button, mess with its high pass and low pass filters, and its volume, and so on. Uh, so that is a real handy thing. To do with that and what else okay it, I think that's about it so I've got the projection every time I'm doing these things uh, the projection keeps up with that too shows me that I have my high pass low pass volume oh and a volume reset so if the the volume I'm using this sleepy time let's get the right one up <laughs> There we go. So I can do that, and if, where if I'm at, it's like, no, I want to set it back to zero. I just hit the button, and it goes back to zero. So just another one of the many programming features that this ReLearn does. So I hope that's educational. I hope it's not too motion six, just me and my cell phone. Uh, but I'll break out my tutorial tools uh, at some point, and maybe do another video like this, and then do uh, some more, some instructional, and just show because I had a hard time figuring out as good as everyone was out there it's documenting uh, the things I wanted to do. I couldn't figure it out. So anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye.